to apply this again and again. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. It depends on you. There are people in my Good morning. There are people who uh, get confused by this map. And I've seen people like, uh, I saw an event, for example, where I gave a one day class, and this guy picked up the, the whole style and decided that's what he's going with and went to the bed after the hour class. Uh, I mean, it's hard, and I've had a fair amount of people who found out that it was class. But it takes a huge commitment to decide that every, no matter what, I'm not going to do anything else, and I'm going to insist on doing that. To me, this style is not that pure to begin with. Kiko is not a purist either. So if you're going to call this Kiko style, which is perfectly you know, acceptable, um, you understand that Kiko is a conglomeration of a number of different styles. Nagano did not do this. Nagano did everything from Pulse. Okay? So it was Kiko who translated what Nagano does to publication. So this is not a Nagano method of doing it. Um, Kiko also had other teachers. Kiko to some extent studied with Monica, and then, which is what, where this location really came from, because um, that was convenient. And then um, Kawaii was a totally different style. So that Kawaii was another big teacher that you see less of his influence now in Kiko, but for in the 90s, that was a huge influence. So Kiko has never uh, claimed to be, um, even though she talks about Nagano as my teacher, you know, um, there are a whole bunch of teachers, and what she does is clearly not exactly Nagano, and that's very, so it, it, combining, and you know, so I think you can combine with anything you want. You can combine with TCM, Dr. Tana, you know, um, Master Tom Points, uh, Richard Tan style, or Julie style, whatever. As long as, you know, the significance of the style is that you're ch checking to see what you're doing. That, to me, is really the significance of the style. You know, if you want to call it the Kiko style. Okay? That, you know, that you're finding things in the abdomen and, or in the body, and you're making sure when you're, when you're nailing the point that you're actually <coughs> affecting the body. Okay? So I think, you know, when you have patients, do, I would start, because once you get a patient used to, you check the body, and they should get results, you're in trouble, okay? Because then, for me, it's an advantage because there's the placebo effect of, oh, wow, you disappeared, and they, they start to trust you. But if you can't get it, you're getting the opposite effect. What? You're a total idiot. You don't know what you're doing, sort of thing. So you need to do it like you're playing. You don't, don't give them the expectation for the first month or two. Do it, just do a little bit. You're just curious. Is there something here? Oh, look here. Is this better? Don't make it, don't make them feel that your treatment depends on making the, the abdomen or the neck or the back better. Okay? It's really important not to do that because if you do, they'll come back expecting it and you may not have the confidence yet. So you need to build up your confidence. I would say combine, so do the little tricks, okay? So, um, red line pulse is very common, so add mushu to it. Um, someone comes and they say, I have gold bladder 21 pain, and they also happen to have had appendicitis, so that's a clear indication of spleen 9. Do spleen 9 up towards the knee, not towards gold bladder 34. And, and then they go, oh, much better at all. You know, so start with the tricks. There's a bunch of tricks. I actually um, suggest to people to start with things like knee, shoulder, um, back pain. You know, so the, the correlation is very clear. And the patient, it's very clear to why they're checking against the shoulder. What, you know, because they are. So take tricks like um, someone can lift their, their arm. Okay, so. If the gallbladder 26 is tight, see how my shirt won't let me lift my arm? As soon as I release gallbladder 26, my arm can go up. Okay? So gallbladder 26 for lifting the arm. Now what releases gallbladder 26, so they'll stay tight in gallbladder 26. By the way, sometimes it can be opposite side, but usually it's the same time. Kidney 7 releases gallbladder 26. Okay, so that's one of the nice tricks to start off with. Um, L4, L5 pain belongs in the spleen 9 category. It's 
spring I needle totally upwards, just like you would needle long, se long seven. Under the skin, we needle spleen on, under the skin, a fair amount of needle goes in, but it's totally under the skin, between the skin and the bone, towards the needle. Um, you want to make sure it's recorded, is that <laughs> um, then, um, I'll just make, uh, for me, stomach 41 is possible plus spleen five. So stomach 41 towards EP6, spleen five towards stomach 41 is one of the best combinations for knees. If that doesn't work, possibly stomach chi would work. For knee pain, stomach 41 plus spleen five are a good, the, the best combination. Usually, the most common best combination for me. It's the best combination, but not, not always working. Of course. Needle towards, towards. Stomach 41 towards kidney 6, spleen 5 up with the flow of the channel, so you can say it's kind of towards stomach 41. Okay. Um, give me some other common things. Oh, releasing the SCM. So, you know, start with releasing the SCM on every patient because it's something you will probably find. So if it's slow pulse or regular pulse, it's going to be triple warmer eight, one third below the elbow. Basically, you just slide up until you stop. If you just slide, you stop at triple warmer eight, and you can take it more towards the small intestine channel if you need to. But that will release opposite side SCM. Okay. Um, if they have rapid pulse, Sanjo five will do a better job of it. So I would start with the things. Now this is obviously an internal disorder releasing the SCM, but it can have something to do with the neck, too. Okay. So I would, the internal disorder stuff, um, play with a little, oh, blah, 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 but think of it as if you're doing your stomach 36, pericardium 6, large intestine 4 treatments for the internal disorders. But for the musculoskeletal stuff, you're using some of the tricks you're learning here. Why? Because then you, you get used to testing and you're getting some confidence and in the meantime you're building a little bit of your repertoire with, with style and, and with the internal disorder stuff. If you start immediately trying to do all the internal disorders just with this style, it's, it is frustrating. What people tell me is it's between three months to nine months to really gain confidence in this. Okay, now the people who really do this, I support them by email. So you email me and you say, I have this, I have this, I have this, you know, and I'll give you answers. You know, now they're not the right answers necessarily, but it's some, no, but at least you have some direction and one thinks about, I and mean, it's interesting, this is like, it's only in the last two years and I'm seeing people, people come to me, I mean, and maybe it's my development as a teacher, I don't know, but it used to be, and certainly my generation, uh, I mean, I graduated from acupuncture school at the end of 1991, okay? So it's a little while back, okay? There were no mentors, okay? The people who taught me in acupuncture school, I would not have gone to them as a mentor. I'm sorry. I mean, you, you're the same generation. I'm assuming you would say something similar. Absolutely. There was no one to go to. I mean, there were successful practitioners to go to and be in their clinic or hang out, but there was no one to really... And here, like at least three people said to me, "Oh, such and such is my mentor." You know, people who studied with me. You know, are there? You know, so there's a different phenomenon now. You know, where people do have mentorships or feel like they have support. We had none. I mean, we barely had books. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're you also. I mean, you you're like three, four years before me. Yeah. Right, right, right. Oh, okay. So what? I mean, the, you know. The, the, as the Chinese acupuncture Max Sebastian had just come out, the Bensky herb, herb thing had just come out, and p halfway through my school, we G Giovanni Machi, the first Giovanni book that we were just so thrilled. There was this somebody actually wrote in English, <laughs> you know, like you could understand, you know, the theory. So we didn't. So now you have more, but you know. So the reason I'm offering this is so that you at least feel some support because that's been something that's been missing field ever since I've been in this field and maybe now it's a little different. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, you're, the, you're the only um, person I ever found offering this service. And and yeah. I can't I've been making my I have been using it, you know, <laughs> and um, it's been the most valuable experience to really I mean, it accelerated my learning tremendously. Yeah, of course, yeah. because having someone to bounce things off. No, I, had, I had so many holes when I was studying with Kiko that I stopped doing the work, you know. Mm -hmm. And then with you, I discovered I could fill 
in those holes, you know? So it's great. The other thing I would encourage you, especially those of you who are here in San Francisco so you have more support, get together. I, I, you know, it's like we have this myth that someone else knows more than we do. Someone has the answers. <laughs> I mean, surely they must have the answers, right? They don't. They make. <coughs> I mean, do, what do you think? I mean, it's true. I mean, what do you think I'm doing when, when I'm with patients or when I'm answering emails? You know, I make it up. You know, if it's right, it's right. If it's wrong, you move on to the next thing. That's that's my the whole gestalt of the style is keep moving. Don't worry. Didn't work, there's always another possibility. Until you get totally stuck, okay, you get totally stuck. But don't let go just because the first thing didn't work. So we have this idea that, the, you know, you, uh, Avi must know, therefore, whatever he said is correct. Bullshit. Avi is making something up, he's trying it out. The whole style is hinging on try it out. If it works, fabulous. Didn't work, move on to the next thing. The question is how many of those can you produce? And my, my intention is to give you the groundwork for producing more and more and more and more possibilities for ideas. Okay, one second. Um, so, um, when you get together, you start getting ideas from each other. I think working together, and it's totally counter what everything that our profession has been about. Mm -hmm. Not consciously, but subconsciously, we're, very, we're basically competing against each other. Because we're each working in our individual clinics, we're not a cop. And we've all, you know, when, now this generation is a little different. Certainly when I was in school, we were all very individualistic because it was still not, it was not a regular profession quite yet. Now it's a little bit more normal. So we had all these people who are like, well, I, I love to do Chico. Or I want to be a Taoist master. <laughs> no, we had all these weirdos. In, you know, like we were all. Well, there's always weirdos in the world. But we were very. The Chinese medicine world is very individualistic, unlike, say, the chiropractic world, that's much more conforming. We don't conform easily as a, as a profession, so we don't know how to cooperate. So if there is one advantage of the community, cl the community clinic model is that there's much, it appears like there's much more cooperation, supposedly. Hmm. Now, yeah, I, I get it. <laughs> I've seen that on the site also. I'm the person who wrote the article that started that whole phenomenon, so I know enough about the people in there and what, what's, you know. but they do have these forums where people can ask questions and cooperate, and also because of Facebooks and stuff, there's, there's just a little bit more openness about cooperating now. But I think getting together and saying, we will get together once every two weeks, or even once a week if you can, but I think once every two weeks is a very good amount to treat each other or bring a patient and three of us treat the patient. You know, get rid of this idea that this is my patient because you'll learn a lot more by being willing to put your patient in the hands of two or three other people in front of, you know. See what happens with these things. And it's a very hard thing to do, but that's the, in my opinion, that's, that's the way to make the profession more forward. Hold on one second. Ilya, you had a question? Oh, I, I, yeah. Earlier you said there are people kind of using other techniques and combining some of the things mm -hmm. you do. Can you, do you have an example of us? I mean, I'm going, I'm doing some brain Yeah, like right here. Abdominal diagnosis <laughs> and then putting other techniques with the abdominal reflexes. Have you seen that? You know? I've seen anything and everything, but you know, Philip is, is a great example. You know, Philip is like, you know, does a lot of Richard Tan. And, and, and Kiko at the same time. So he does, so, you know, for Philip, it's like, link go by for releasing scalings opposite side. You, you know, it's, it's totally, there's nothing, no, there's nothing un Kiko about it. Just because the point came from another, you know, because it happens to be named by some other tradi tradition. But in terms of like, person on the table, you don't have abdominal reflexes, there's one. Maybe I don't use lung five, nine, I use, are there people using other techniques to release those reflexes? Meaning, oh yeah, yeah, I mean, so you'll see, for example, I mean, I already showed you differences between Kiko and I, okay? Red nine, I use Mushu, so we just looked at notes from Kiko's last class, and apparently now that's in, in the notes, but it was never in the notes before. Okay, so yeah, we all doing diff you know, we can all release differently. Also, the other thing is, especially if you're using the way I'm talking about it, which is not how everybody talks about this style. 
This is the Avi take on this. Okay, this is not the standard take on this. I'm not trying to make myself special because that's just saying that I am that I'm doing it somewhat differently. Mm. My take on this is you can release reflexes 20 different ways. There's no one way. That's why I'm pretty opposed to what we're about to do now, which is to give you all the protocols. <laughs> do this for this and this for this. But you need to know that. But then after because it gives you food for thought. There are 20 different ways to release any one reflex. It's not one. There may be the most common or the most uh, useful ways, etc., etc. Like I told you, like one of my, my students said, oh, this is 15 years, 17 years ago. Avi, I can do large test and fall over three to release a ketsu. Okay? Yes. And the question then was, which is the most efficient? So it's not releasing the reflex system. Can I have someone on the table for a second? Just one second. <laughs> Favorite Let's just check what you have. So this will give you the choreography again, just for the sake of it. So I know you have a question. All right. So this is okay. Yeah, it's okay. This is okay, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you know what my fingers are like. Okay. So she has red and false, I believe. Likely, but not really. Yeah. Okay. Fifteen. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Twelve. No. Did you do fifteen before twelve? Doesn't matter. <laughs> oh yeah. One. <laughs> <laughs> With a little improvisation. <laughs> you, have, you have four bars to do whatever you like. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Uh, and yeah. One? Yeah. And yeah. Okay. So yes. Yes, she basically probably has a tight diaphragm because do you see how there's a flu um, uh, fluctu not fluctuation, flutter, flutter in, in, in the throat? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to guess that she has a... Hmm? What does that look like? <laughs> uh, just a little... You know. um, so I'm going to guess that there's something in your nervous system that you, you're, you know, there's either emotional distresses. I mean, I don't know what there is, but that's my guess. Um, and Pulse is not telling me anything. Okay, so just reminder, 15, now they're a little higher than I would like, I would have liked someone with more, hold on, stomach 28, 13, 13, no, easy for you, you know, you, you don't have lower abdomen. She's clearly rib cage on the liver, rib cage in the center, rib cage on the left, yeah? Mm. So just remember these and a little bit here. Mm, yeah, not really. Okay, so bend your knees for me. You do not do this with patients. I don't recommend. Not a very good thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. And out. All I'm doing is I'm stretching out the fascia. Just want to show you that the reflexes don't mean anything because if you stretch the fascia. And out. You don't need needles. Okay. Again. And out. Let's drop your chin into my fingers. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. All right. How is center? That's good. How is right? Yeah. How is left? Yeah. <laughs> Do you see how abdomen is basically totally meaningless if you want to make it meaningless? <laughs> it's it's a tool. Clearing the abdomen, you can do 20 million ways. All you have to do is stretch that fascia. The reason the reflexes are there is because for whatever reason, I, mean, I don't know what, the fascia reflects something, there's something that it's likely in this condition to coagulate and show. And, and the tissue there is misaligned and therefore it, there is some difficulty there. It almost feels to me like this is the center of a spider web. And like, so when a, a, a fly hits up here, it triggers a reflex here. So the spider goes, you know, like, so yeah. that's when you release everything, 
I don't know. So it just came to me. No, no, no. Saying. It's a very, it's a very nice metaphor. Um, and so you, I mean, what I would say about what you just said is that you clearly have the capacity to 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 make up the imagery, and that's that's going to serve you really well. At the end of the day, you know, it's like I don't want to predict, but I'm going to project myself 50 years down the down the road. Okay. If I'm going to say. If I were the person to write something on Kiko's tome, okay, it would be something about imagination. This is a person who had fabulous capacity, imaginative capacity, and at the same time to apply, to, to take this imagination and to actually apply it in real life. Because lots of people have imagination that can fly, but they can't come down and make it happen. This, to me, is Kiko's greatest asset. If I really look at what is the greatness of this person, that it's this capacity of just like going, she can take some text or she can take an image in the body and just go and fly with it all over the place. But at the end, what she she's not gonna like just go and like, okay, well that was cute. Oh, this was a really cool LSD trip. She's gonna make it work on the body. Ultimately, that's all she's really interested in. But she has an incredible imagination. I mean, she can like put pieces together and go, wow, this, but this looks like this, and this looks like this, and this, and this reminds me of this, and this is why it's hard to follow her sometimes, because you're kind of like going, what? Like, I, my imagination doesn't say anything like that, and you don't have you know, enough of the background either to follow. But that's what, that's what she, in my opinion, that's the greatness of what she does, and that's why, to me, following some of the other people who teach this style is not as fun. Mm. You know, but it's easier. It's it's nicer for us because we can get okay, do it like this, and now now I get it. But then you did you weren't given the flight of like okay, and how do you like speed it up, you know, and really fly with it? Okay, and that's the problem in following Kiko. You know, is that you you are expected to fly, whether you have wings, you know how to fly, you have gas, it doesn't matter. You either fly or you sink, and that's why so many people sink. Because it's hard for them, you know. But does that make sense? Oh, yeah. That yeah. was really beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that, that means that the easiest thing is for us to really understand what fascia is and what and how to really if you understand it. what fascia is, that'd be very nice. I'll give you my understanding yeah. of it. Um, the fascia is well. Okay, so so you know the fascia is uh, vegetarian, but I you know like when you have chicken, you have that yellow, gooey stuff. That's fascia. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it surrounds everything. Okay, everything, including your muscles, including your organs, has some sort of wrapping around it. Given that it's um, now in the theory, in the pl in plastics theory, in chemistry, there is a theory called crystallinity. Okay, how crystalline a m material is. So this is—it's going to sound exactly like Bridging theory. Okay, except it's going to—I'm going to tell you it in a language that sounds like it's chemistry. Okay, in crystallinity theory, a plastic that is opaque—it's because all the molecules are going all over the place. A plastic that's clear, it's because the molecules are all aligned in the same place, therefore it's clearer. Mm -hmm. You get to a crystal and it's, you've basically five, um, made that to the nth degree, and therefore you can create a laser and a jet, you know, that, that's the, everything flows through, you know, like a laser through a crystal. So what happens in the fascia, sometimes things just like drop it. Okay. Now that dropping, that's why mushu for me is so important because everything is about don't let it just drop and glob. Okay. You need to open it so it can so it can be aligned, so the meridians can be aligned, so as the Chinese would say it. Okay. And therefore conductive. Right. That's my understanding. Mm -hmm. Now, why specific points seem to reflect certain things, I don't yeah, know. That's, 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 that's no one knows that. Like I mean, the way that the move, move points reflect that 
organ particularly. Yeah, we there. don't totally understand that. It's uh, some of it, quite honestly, is philosophical. I mean, I can do whole lectures on on how come different points, parts of the body are really philosophically the way they're supposed to be, you know, how it happened to one. And to show you that Manaka has totally different set of moon points, for example. And the moon points, for example, we don't use the moon points so much as our reflexes. So it's not, um, these, the different people have different ideas and if you're really good at this stuff, so for example, um, there's a guy by the name of Yamamoto. You may have heard of uh, Yamamoto's new scalp acupuncture. Yeah. Okay. So he has a bunch of different reflexes in the SCM. He has a bunch of different reflexes here. He has all these, um, you know, reflexes in the head, of course, because that's really his specialty. He has reflexes in the calf. You know, no, that's not him. But there are other people who have reflexes in the calf. Okay. You can do anything you want. So the fascia is going. If you figure out the right things. You know, ours happens to, it's just one system. It, it, it's not the only system out there. It's just the system that we, I work with because the thing I like about it is it's gross. It's not too intricate. Then why don't you just do this on your patient? But because then you can't really understand. Okay, okay. so excuse me. Um, your, your headache is gone now? Your, uh, your thyroid is cured? Yeah. See, all I'm saying is that releasing the fascia isn't the only thing that matters. Yeah. It's not this fascia that needs to be released. It's all the switches everywhere that stop. Yeah. When you release the other fascia, the switch is there. It's like the fly there. Right. Then it has um, a, re a, a, a recursive effect that seems to affect the whole body. Mm. Yeah, I think like how do we really start thinking about all these other switches that work? That's where you have a bunch of protocols and you go and then you have to find for you know, you have to start looking at yourself. What is this what is this channel meaning? Assuming you believe in the in the existence of or, or, or the, the way the channels are prescribed in the Chinese model. Okay, they don't have to be that way, but assuming that this, you know, and you start thinking, what does what does this channel represent? So like this whole thing. Oh, that doesn't go into someone's notes one day. <laughs> so, well, it's kind of interesting. You see your own stuff in other people's notes. Like, oh, okay, that's kind of cool. Must be right. <laughs> it, doesn't have anything. It, just, it just feels like bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> so this whole thing of sending the heel down and yeah. lifting the ankle yeah. up. Okay, so I'll tell you quite honestly, 100% where I got it from yeah. is Mr. Yenga. Okay, okay? that's okay. exactly that's where that's I got that from. Okay, perfect. so, um, so, you do that, and then you start, and you start feeling, and then you go, okay, that's actually the kidney channel, mm -hmm. okay? Or that's what appears to me like the kidney channel. And each one of us is going to have a different kind of body, mm -hmm. yeah. and our stuckness, or our ability to open or not open a channel, is going to be different. Mm -hmm. okay? Which also tells you that the channel may actually be different on you, or whatever, it, whatever it is. But so you start. You, some people do it intellectually. I mean, if you're a student of Jeffrey Ewens, for example, you will probably do it a lot more intellectually than I do. Okay? Because we're all inclined to do these things differently. So you just try to figure out. You know, and you will, if you're someone like me, you will go to all sorts of places that, you know, that, that are going to be a total waste of time. Like, you should be able to feel your pericardium. Yeah, I can feel tension there, but it doesn't help me. It doesn't help me understand the pericardium channel. You know, but there is a lot of people who do stuff like that. So you can you can stretch the channels, you can feel them. You know, there's a whole bunch of stuff out there, and you're gonna have to go to a whole bunch of rubbish or not so rubbish until you you, you pick a little bit from it. I mean, we once went to um, a class by what was his name? Trang uh, Viet mm -hmm. <laughs> some Vietnamese guy who's very famous apparently. Hmm? I like him. Hmm? You like him. Okay, he might have, wasn't for me, but that's okay. No, no, he wasn't my cup of tea. It's okay, no big deal. I mean, yeah. I, he was speaking French, and there was a translator, and then he goes, oh, large intestine 16 is, um, you know, it, it is a marrow, uh, a sea of marrow point. And it just so happens that I happen to know the exact place in the Ling Shu where it talks about, and I happen to know that large intestine 16 is nowhere, nowhere in the link show. How do I know? Because it's very easy nowadays. That number one, there's indexes, and number one, you can do a scan. You know, you take a PDF of the whole thing and you just search for the character. You know, Jugu, and it's like if it isn't there, it isn't there. There's no, no. So, 
I'm an ass, you know. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm saying to this guy, well, what, what do you mean? Like, where, where did you get that from? It's like, it doesn't fit my own idea. So he goes, oh, it's in the classics. Well, you know, that doesn't have, that's not work for me. It's all in the classics. <laughs> oh, it's in the, it, it's, it's, uh, it's in the Day Jing. Well, you know, you already know that this is not a good answer. He may be, so, you know, it's a, he may be a great person, but he, he's, he's not a Chinese speaker. He's not a Chinese reader. We know, we know that because we actually went to him with the text in Chinese and literally ran away. <laughs> So, we should turn that off. <laughs> yeah, I did that later. <laughs> so, anyway, so then he eventually he says, Oh, it's a Ling Shu. And I know exactly which it's, it's Ling Shu 33, and it doesn't say large, it doesn't succeed. I know it doesn't say large, it doesn't succeed. It says do 16. Okay, he doesn't speak numbers, so it's not like he mixed up the 16. And it says something about the gray in the head, something like a, a cap in the head. So which people interpret to be do 20 often, which could be a misinterpretation or a correct interpretation, up to you. Large of 16 is not in there. So I, I got to, you know, oh, this guy is an idiot, blah, 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 blah. Well, I went home and I started looking at that. And so the name of large of 16 is, is jugo, meaning a huge bone. How do you get a huge bone? It has to be filled with something. It will be filled with marrow. So I understand that for his tradition, somebody later on added and said, okay, this one does, no, it's true, you can do large intestine 16 sometimes for low back pain, it's actually a pretty good point. Okay. So you can, well, the point of the story is not to put someone down or anything, to show you that even when you get pissed off at someone, you think they're a total idiot, you can actually learn from them. Yeah. <laughs> That's the point. And so you have to create, but you have to create that opportunity for yourself. And normally we won't. Normally we'll just go, he's an idiot, bye. <laughs> you know? And the trick is how do you look at, like, why are they saying it? Where does it come from? You know, what, what's, it may not be my truth, but what's their truth in it? How can I convert it to be something useful for me? And that's a lot of work. And none of us were trained to do that. Certainly not in my subject. You may be trained to do it in, in some other school, you know, some other profession, but not in our, in our profession it was like, God said, and then spit it out and you board exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 it's supposed to be creative. Yeah. It's poetic language. Yeah, yeah, I think. Uh, so. Wait. This is from before. Um, I just want to give a shout out to Elanita because you were talking about um, sort of sticking together and she had the Facebook group sticking together acupuncturist on Facebook. I don't know if everybody's on it or not, but... Um, I was talking to her about getting together and actually, because I'm so new at this method mm -hmm. to practice, and she's like, absolutely. So we're gonna try to have like monthly groups. So if anybody wants to see that. What, what do, do you call this system? This form of acupuncture? I would call it Kiko style. I mean, yeah. I, but I'm very clear that what I that you cannot go to Kiko and say, this is what I would teach it. First of all, because she'll get pissed off. But um, because I, it, we each bring our own stuff into it. So that I can tell, and I will often tell you, Kiko does it like this. So if you're looking at the, needling the watos, like I told you, for example, yesterday, Kiko needles the watos a lot closer to the do, and actually she prefers the do's, and she'll need them upwards. I go for the outside, and you know, so we have different styles. Is, is, is this a, a unique system? Yes. Of, okay, yes. So it's that's totally no other Japanese acupuncture like this. So, as far as I know, I can't be sure, but as far as I know, this is this is my understanding of the evolution of the system. Okay. And I could be wrong on that, but this is my understanding. Kiko, came out, Kiko went to a regular Japanese acupuncture school, something like the Meiji school or whatever the fuck, you know, some boring school, because she told me specifically that it was boring. <laughs> so good, just like my school was boring. And she came out of it, and she, at, during that time, she was working for uh, a journal, um, Chinese medicine journal in Japan. So she had access to a lot of people. And she realized, this is something we're very similar, because I did the same thing, I mean, I did exactly the same thing, but we both had criticism of the way we were trained. And we looked for something else. Her way of looking was, she decided anybody past 1945, this is in a, 
mid 70s, let's say late 70s, uh, would still be alive possibly. Before 1945, it was a waste of time to bother. She wanted to study with them. And she went and looked for articles by people who were really, who, who seemed to mean something. And she, stuck, she did apprentice with Malika for a while. She was in Japan a very short time, and then she came and became, you know, she came the year that the England School of Acupuncture, which was the first acupuncture school in the States, started, which was 1979, I believe. So, and she was roommates with two people who said there was a one-year program in Holly Eagle at the time, now Holly Guzman, and Stephen Birch, and Kiko were roommates in Boston at that time. And this is how... You know, and then Kiko, by, by virtue of being one of the few people who like actually graduated in acupuncture school, became like a big person in this country, you know, because there weren't too many people, you know. And she would go back to Japan every so, you know, and then she's one of the people that she researched, that she found out was, was had a big um, name, was Nagano. He published an article on treating black lung. He lived in the south of Japan in the mining community. Okay, so treating black lung successfully, nobody's ever heard of that. Okay, so she went, oh, this one I'm interested in. Now she also, she told me that she has an interest in, in people of a specific age because as a woman in Japan, okay, it's different now for her. But at that time, I remember that it was not so pleasant for her because they treated her badly. A lot of people in Japan, you know, they said, because she's aggressive, and the style is aggressive, and they said, oh, no, no, our style, we do this toyohari, very gentle, di -ki 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 -ki, and they kind of, you know, they didn't like this pushy little broad sort of thing. <laughs> this New York Jew broad kind of girl. <laughs> so, you know, so she would, <coughs> she chose people, she felt that if there was a very particular generation that was much more accepting of women, that they couldn't be, they, they couldn't have been too young after World War II, because those men, that's what she claims, uh, were too spoiled, and they were very misogynistic, because they had older brothers that died in the war, so the family showered them as like the most important thing, in the, you know. So the, the teachers that she wanted to have had to be a certain, you know, by kind of dogma or whatever, uh, generalization. So, and Kawai, so Nagano was one of them, and Kawai published a paper on treating deaf children, born deaf, one third of them afterwards could hear enough to go to regular school. One third could actually hear something, but not to be able to go to regular school. And one third don't change after a year. So you know, when you can take a child and actually, and actually, I had a case once, um, a few months ago, of a guy who came uh, with deafness, and he could hear after the treatment using the lifestyle. So it actually does work. <laughs> it's kind of unusual that you can say that because usually you're like, oh wow, well, you know. So. Uh, no, I mean, you know, so she realized that, so those were the two people that she started going, she would go to Japan and hang out with for two weeks at a time. The problem was when she saw what Nagano was doing, and by then Kiko was already teaching. I started studying with Kiko, she had just started kind of like exploring the Nagano style, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. And because beforehand she was doing a lot of uh, I Ching and philosophy, and it, it was very different. And it was very Monica based. And you can look at the first books that she had with Stephen Birch, that are, they're very Monica based. Um, as she was studying with Nagano, she realized that she would that what she was doing was really amazing, but it doesn't mean that she can do it, and it certainly doesn't mean she can teach it, which was a big concern for her. So she had to translate what he's the points and whatever she understood he was doing to something that would be more applicable to people like us. Okay? And hence, she took the abdominal thing. That's why I don't believe there's something similar in Japan. And took what Nagano did, which was pulse, and translated it to abdominal. Okay. Okay. Therefore, I don't believe there's another Japanese style that's like this. This is definitely unique. And um, so the only people that might be somewhat like that are people who came from Monica. But most Japanese styles, if they're doing palpation, it's very different, it's very gentle. None of this, I mean, what I do is, in, is it's invasive. You're poking into people's out. I mean, you're poking, you're not just gently going like this. It's different. So it, it is unique. That's great, so thank you so much. Sure. 
let's do a bunch of protocols, otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> can I, can I yes. So what you found on her, that tightness all in that upper area, mm -hmm. I, I see that a lot. And so if I'm not going to get on the table and do what we did. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you have to. F okay, so my thinking is, we haven't, we don't know, we don't have medical history, we don't know anything. But all I'm saying is, it, I believe it's a tight diaphragm. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you come back for a moment? Sure. Chances are she's going to show C3 or SCM. Now I told you already she had this. Um, yeah. Whatever the flutter. So she, in my opinion, it's an, an autonomic nervous system. <laughs> So I'm just By flutter, you mean the uh, the vein, the vein? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Look here. It's slight. It's not huge. Mm -hmm. Yes. Here too, and on the right side. I mean, the whole area. There's a slight tre tremble. Yeah. You know. So I think it's a nervous system situation, but um. Two, 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 two. One, two, three, four. Nothing? Okay, this side. One, two, three, four. Nothing on three? Yeah, it's tight for sure. It's okay. Oh, okay. She's one of those people that <laughs> tight doesn't count. They don't say unless. Okay. So I think it's a tight diaphragm. Now, the tight diaphragm could come from all sorts of, you know, like. You know issues. You know, the, but it's it's uh, something to do with the nervous system. Whereas whether whether it comes from a nervous system originally or it comes from a mental attitude that reinforces itself on the nervous system, I don't know. My inclination is to say it's 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 uh, it, it's sorry, not very nice. I, you know, it's always <laughs> weird to diagnose to, to diagnose people in front of them. <laughs> you know, I it's think it's a mental attitude, and her, you know, I mean, she's. A, She's a little, she feels to me as if she's playing tough a little bit. She's had to be somehow t a tough person. <laughs> I don't know, is that... Is that yeah, um, yeah. So therefore, the nervous system... You know, I, I try not to do psychotherapy with people unless they ask for it, but I'm trying to do it totally in the body. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so it's as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay? So if you're going to be a tough person, your nervous system is going to hold possibly, mm -hmm. depending on its own capacity. So for example, Kiko will say, you know, she tells people, you have adrenal reflex, you shouldn't have coffee, and people say to her, Kiko, you can drink and you smoke it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but I'm not adrenal. I can do it. You know, every person has different capacity to adjust. Okay? So some people can be tough and the nervous system will not get affected in the least. It doesn't matter to them. Some people's nervous system they, they're a little, being a little bit tough, and the nervous system totally holds. So I think for her, so now, is this again here, or still away? It's the... But still some? Yeah. Okay, so when I press here, how is... Yeah, that's a little better. Yeah, so I think that pattern is a tight diaphragm. Okay. Now, if you want that you can look up, there's Monica, uh, things that I believe this is a yin, possibly Yin Chao Ren. Um, I don't. Yeah. People always. Yin Wei. This is a Yin Wei. Okay. Yin Chao Ren. I don't know. But there's, there's this is there is a clear pattern in Manica with IP cords. The only thing that I don't like about that is that um, with the IP cords that use the Manica style, okay, one side to one side. People sometimes I've had people they get palpitations they get you know weird phenomena from it and then the, the the people who promote the style say oh it's because you left it too long or you know you well, how do you, how can you tell what's too long you know it gets very intricate and very difficult to deal with so Kawhi had a very different style which is crossing okay so one of the things is so um, okay so you're saying get away so we'll figure out. Although it's interesting because that pressure under the ribs with a lot of pressure with a lot of people, uh -huh. I just use spleen four and it goes away. Really? That's okay. We'll try. Well, that's that's with the yin wei, right? Yin yeah, that is yin wei. Yeah. PC six and C four. Okay. So you have here, here, and here, and tight. Mm -hmm. Now on the back, relax. Anything UB13? Mm, no. Okay. 
pericardium? Uh, no. Heart? A little bit. A little bit, okay. Yeah. So because Kawaii has a style of pumping cords, you, we used to say that you can diagnose with, um, with a back treatment, but when, when he was here, he was like looking at us like, what? <laughs> he was like, I don't think that's good. Uh, but it used to be if you have pain on UB13, and we, he said 80% of people will show one, one way or the other. Uh, either UB13 line is painful or UB14 and 15 is painful. If it's UB13, it's Ren, Ren Mai Chow, if we call Chow Chow. This is called Wei Wei. So per pericardium 6 to spleen 4. Notice no needles. Mm. Gallbladder 41 to Sanja 5. The reds are always on the left. This is called infinity treatment because, well, you'll see in a moment. Now, his gallbladder 41 is actually, doesn't have to be, it's closer to 40. He's looking for puff. Something here? Mm -hmm. So you can see clearly that I'm not on gallbladder 41. Five. And this is where it gets to be really fun now because we get to do something called a lovely name, Pachi Pachi. <laughs> it's a sparker. It's an oven sparker, basically. Okay, you may feel something, you may not. You may feel opposite on the spleen for opposite side. You feeling anything? You're gritting your teeth. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry, do you need to do that? It's okay. Okay, and here you make your own Sanja 5 or here. Okay, good enough. Okay. So you just put it close to it, you don't want to electrocute them? I mean, I felt this one really strong. Yeah. I, but you don't really want to do that. Mm, yeah. So it can happen. I'll tell you, Kawhi would use this and nobody felt jack shit. He did it on me. I, I was like, I hate this. And he <laughs> does it and it, it you don't feel it. I do it, everybody feels it. It's like, I don't, I don't know, you know, you're pressing a button, how can you, you can't say he's doing Qigong on the, on the machine. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's incredible, it's like he could, I mean he used thick needles, used one and a half inch needles with a one inch tube, he wanted number eights, I had to get him, get him Chinese needles I had in my house, I had to autoclave them in a pressure cooker, because you know, from, from when I was a student I still had some weird needles, that's what he wanted, he bangs them in, mucks on every needle, and patchy on everything. No one feels anything. He, he, there's pictures of me with ear needles with moxa <laughs> coming out of my ears. Yeah. <laughs> All right. How is left side? Okay. Center. That's good. Right side. I don't feel anything. You don't feel. Okay, so all of them are gone. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I prefer, and basically I need to check number four. It's still tight, but. Awesome, you can, no. <laughs> so you can add the advantage of this, no needles. So this is different, you see it's across. So you're going this, like an infinity sign or figure eight sign. So this are, these are called kawaii infinity treatments, okay? And we have two main patterns, either wei wei or chow chow. And then we have some variations on them. So that's a whole other thing, and in the summer, I'm going to do a class in Indonesia on kawaii style, and there will be a video of that. So if you want, I mean, the kawaii style requires a lot of toys. Mm -hmm. This is just one little thing, you know. I mean, we're talking about easily $500 investment to just start. And if you really want to do it, it's probably $1,500. Mm -hmm. okay, so that's why I don't teach a lot of toys. Because it's, it's a whole subject, but I will do one in, in August. And I will make sure that there's a video out of that because that's kind of, it's an unusual, it's hard for me to teach those classes. Okay. So, um, so that pattern could be, you know, because I think that the, I don't know what the Monica people call it. Yeah, well, it's like cross, like if it's tight here. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. they have cross, inguinal and this yeah. is different. Yeah, that's why, so I, I just don't know enough about it. But for us, yeah, I mean for us, for, for the Kawaii thing, Kawaii basically said, he, originally I, 
perhaps he did say UB13 is Chow Chow, UB14 and 15 is Wei Wei. But when I saw him, he said chest above diaphragm is uh, uh, Wei Wei. Below, the lower abdomen is Chow Chow. That was his, you know, that's, that was the dog he gave. Um, I can't say that 80% of the people fall into this category, into one of, of the two categories. That's, you know, that's a high exaggeration in my opinion. I even felt that when, when we first saw this. And I used to use this a lot more. But it's a cool trick to have if you have the equipment. The question, Mr. Euler. Yeah, you are right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> David, David will have them. Uh, there's a yeah, guy yeah, in England that sells them. There's a possibility that, more, I believe Kiko sells, maybe Holly sells. Oh, yeah. Okay, I, I don't know if she has different ones. I mean, we, there are, these are the old style ones. David's a gentler, but I'm not sure. People, some people tell me they really work well, some people tell me they're not sure. Um, but when people are not sure, you don't know if are they using it right. I mean, it's hard. Richard Denham has a question machine. Really? Yeah. Mm, I never seen that. Yeah, like oh, that's no, 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 piezo. No, no, no. Piezo. Wait, 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 wait. Someone asked me about that also. Yeah. These that's, some, that's, that's, the pie, that's some sort of piezo point. Pie, that's a piezo, yeah. yeah. They this call Pachi. No. They also call Pachi. They call the Pachi. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. okay, so they took off from us. <laughs> I don't know. This is, um, this is, okay, call this Pana Sparker. This is what OMS used to call it when they sold it. This was called the Pana Sparker. And there, you, you know, they just no company. This was Panasonic did it. It's it's a it's a modified uh, oven sparker. That's all, and it, it was selling for like seventy five dollars. Okay, so it was expensive, even though the sparker should really cost ten. The problem is, no one uses lighters anymore, and also the front is modified, so you can put a needle in here. So no one makes these anymore, and Panasonic basically decided that it wasn't worth it for them uh, to make because it was such a small market. For, for this stuff. So what there's there's some people in Israel that manufacture some of these things. You know, like you have diet drinks, they have a whole bunch of things. So I have friends who are doing this. I will do my best. Um, now there's a possibility in Indonesia that they'll they'll be able to because these things should be a lot cheaper than they are. But the thing is to figure out the right diodes. You know, it's the so it's it's the electronic crap that we have to figure out with it. Is it 10.30 already? Oh, 10.00. Okay. Hi. Hi. Are you okay? Yeah. Do you wait? So just have a seat. Okay. So I just want to do like a quick um, review for protocols. Are you okay? Yeah. So, um, so you asked me about things that you can take, you know. So let's look at like the five, you know, like the five organ types because that will helpful, be helpful. Then next is it AMS. Um, let's look at uh, diabetes, thyroid, um, that would be good enough, that would give us enough, that would give you plenty to work with, okay? So, let's start with the spleen types. Spleen types, spleen should supposedly reflect around the navel, okay, officially, because that's the center, okay? But actually we don't say that so much. Okay. So places where you will see reflection of the spleen is, um, number one, right side stomach 27 is digestion. Anyone who's had appendix removed, that's a fair amount of people, is a spleen type. Mm. This is to us a spleen 9 type. Okay? Needle upwards. I think I did spleen 9 with someone yesterday. So you saw that it clearly needle upwards with the flow of the channel, not towards called by 34. Okay? Um, another thing that indicates spleen 9 type is gallbladder 21 pain, very clearly gallbladder 21. Okay, so it's not like the whole shoulder, but gallbladder 21 specifically. We call that wood overactive, spleen deficiency inviting wood to overact on it. That's why it shows on a gallbladder channel. Okay. It's also very common for people, they had appendix removed first, say age 12 or whatever, 20, 30, 40 years later they had gallstones. The, the inflamed activity on the right side moves upwards and starts bothering the gallbladder. Okay, so that's fairly typical. Okay. Another spleen type is the spleen 3 type. The spleen 3 type tends to be they love sugar or carbs. Okay. And they tend to be, they don't have to be big. 
but they are going to give you a feeling of chubbiness, even if they're tiny, because there's going to be a little bit of a drop in the body. There, there's no, they're not wiry. Okay, the spleen three types, generally speaking. Spleen types in general are what we call pear-shaped. Okay, big uh, in Israel we call it big Mediterranean butt. Okay, so. We, uh, if you, my example of this is basically when you sit across, uh, it's the more typical with women. You're sitting across from them, say at a cafe or something, and you're thinking, wow, she's so tiny, so thin, Miss Twitty. She gets up and you go, whoa, who are you? You know, like a double sometimes the size. You know, from the, wa from the waist up, thin, from the waist down, bigger. That's the sugar type, that's the spleen type. Does it have to be that exaggerated? No, of course not. That's a caricature, so you remember. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, there's lots of women who are show, you know, who are spleen types, and they're just, just a little bit. It doesn't have to be huge, okay? Whereas, yeah. I would think that the spleen type, I mean, this would be more the apple shape. Like no, the apple is no. The apple is a liver type. Big apple on two little, you know, like the. Uh, what do you, the candied apple that except it has two sticks for legs. <laughs> that, that's a liver type because lit, fat, it accumulates fat around. Spleen's not responsible for fat liver. Spleen is responsible for the actual muscles that they have. They've got muscles. Okay, so that's a spleen type. They usually, these are people who love pasta. So spleen three within so within enough. Not all spleen types will show that body type. That's just a general thing to kind of help you maybe also get to, to it. Spleen three type uh, often they have the spleen three type relates more to the, the emotional issues with the spleen, the mental emotional issues with the spleen. Generally speaking, it's definitely we use spleen three for sugar for diabetes and. We use spleen three when they have scalings pain here. So the scalings are, you could call stomach 11, I call stomach 12, between the two heads of the SCM and behind the posterior head of the SCM. These are breathing muscles, okay? So here, okay? So the scalings belong to the spleen. Now you will find in the Kiko literature this fabulous thing called spleen 3.2. It means spleen three. It's just a cute name to basically say, don't be on your bone, be slightly away from the bone. That's all. Mm -hmm. okay? So don't get excited over you know, spleen 3.2 and like exactly where it is. It's spleen three. Okay? So these are the two main spleen types we have. Another type of spleen we have, uh, another big spleen point we use is spleen seven, which we use for either too much bleeding or edema. And otherwise, we use spleen seven for kidney issues. For example, we use it as part of a liver treatment, liver excess on the right side, and we use it for ear infections. Spleen seven, Sanjao eight is our main combination for ear infections. Okay, so that's kind of like kind of <laughs> got the spleen out of the way. On the back, if you have it for the spleen type, but that's just about everybody. Neil T eleven T twelve. Everybody's going to get T eleven T twelve if you follow the way I do things. Okay, it's just almost universal. Okay. The liver types, you have two types. You have the excess type and the deficient type. Excess type is you press under the ribs or a liver 14, they go, ouch. Deficient type, they just go, yeah, there's something there. And like I showed you, you can pinch. Okay. If it's excess, okay, let's go through the deficiency because it's easier. Deficiency should be liver one. We have four kinds of liver one. You might even say you have five kinds of liver ones. Okay, so you have the liver one that's in T the TCM, which is half. Okay, you have the if you were taking it like a Jingwell point, it will be here, right? Edge of the nail, go all the way out. That's number one. Number two, go from the crease halfway to here. That's number two. Take one on the crease, that's number three. Now you can have two here also. You have one up, almost at the edge of the nail and you can have one halfway. Now Kiko only talks about four, she doesn't talk about this one. And Kiko likes this one best. I like this one best. Okay, so you can see, now what does it mean I like? It's not because, wow, I like 
you know, that kind of thing. It just means I find that this works for me best. Kiko finds that this works for her best. So just know, and you may find that one of the other ones works for you best. Okay, so just accept the fact that there's more than one possibility of where liver one would be. Okay? Uh, liver one is the right side for liver deficiency. The only thing is, just remember that liver deficiency uh, with uh, slow pulse, liver one is a better point for rapid pulse. So on a slow pulse, I'm going to be a little bit hesitant before I use it. That's mean I won't use it, but I may, may look for other things. Liver excess is going to fall into a few categories. One category we saw yesterday is like true physical damage, hepatitis, radiation, chemo kind of people. Okay, Any cancer patient, you must treat liver and thyroid. Okay, You cannot ignore liver and thyroid, whatever else you do with them. Okay? You have to make sure they have good red 12 is, is in good shape. You have to make sure the liver and the thyroid are treated well. Okay, Otherwise, you can't, in my opinion, treat cancer. Now, um, the liver axis with true liver damage is the kidney 7, spleen 7, heart 3, pericardium 4, which is three fingers below pericardium 3, on the right side. Can you repeat that? Spleen, kidney 7, spleen 7, heart 3, pericardium 4, three fingers below 3, all on the right side. Then you have another liver axis type that shows liver to pain that often is the kind of person who comes from a family of alcoholics, even if they don't drink. Liver 2 pain, we do liver 4, liver 8. Then you have the kind we call liver excess, the kind that has mouth sores. For us, mouth sores is not stomach fire. That's liver excess for us. And that's a spleen 3, liver 3, both sides. You can have combination of these three types, so they don't have to be exclusive. So that's your liver um, excess types, three types of liver excess. Then you have the undefined types, or so within that you have, for example, people with, who've been exposed to toxicity, those are kidney nine plus large intestine 15. They will usually, these people will show thyroid as well. Thyroid is also very uh, susceptible to toxins. So what if they're detoxing, is it the same thing? Like they so are like if they de detoxing from like alcohol, that's drugs. That's yeah, they, then the liver has been damaged through toxicity as a part, you know, yeah, I would say they could be that. Be careful because the person could have had toxicity but actually phys also physical liver damage. You have to choose which one is going to do a better job, which one do I think is the right one for you. Okay. Then you have some liver types where you're not sure what's going on. Kidney 9 often does a good job. The other one is take, now you're talking about gallbladder 27, 28, they're in the inguinal. Okay. Needle towards the leg will release the liver. Okay. So for example, for her, but with the ribs, we could have tried to see if stomach 30, gallbladder 27 would have released it. That would have been another way to go in. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, and then you have the point do 20 go to the right between the bladder and the gallbladder channels, find a, a dent and that could release the liver. So you have a bunch of different options for liver. No matter what you did for the liver on the front, whether it's excess or deficient, on the back it's the same thing. Left side GB35, which releases T7 to T9 area on the, sorry, UB35 on the left, to release T7 to T9 on the right side, the liver area. Because the liver always reflects in the right. Liver types, yes, they could be apple types, and they will often show neck on the right side specifically see okay. Now, you have one more liver type, which is what we call the liver, the fatty liver type. Okay. So that person, you know, like a high cholesterol type or whatever, something along those lines, that person, okay. um, that person will, if they're not too chubby, if they're not too big, you can do right side stomach 25, right side liver uh, 13. That's the treatment for that. However, if they're very big, like a huge kind of person, you know, very obese, you need to start, you need to start on the left side. We start left gallbladder 26, 
left side to stomach 27, REM 6, unless the pulse is low. Right stomach 25, right liver 13. So, watch, don't write so fast. Don't talk so fast. No, you start on the left side moving to the right because they're so big you need to shuttle. The, doing just this is not enough. Okay? So, so right stomach 25, right liver 13 is fatty liver treatment, but you need to jump it from the left side. Left gallbladder 26, left stomach 27, the Oketsu area. Now, add REN 6, but don't add REN 6 if they have slow pulse. Okay. REN6 and slow pulse don't work together. Remember, slow pulse don't stimulate the abdomen okay. or the center of the abdomen. Okay. Then you do stomach 25 and liver 13. That's the fatty liver treatment. Okay. So you'll, you'll have, there's lots of fatty livers out there to take some okay. um, So that's the liver. Adrenals, the equivalent, our equivalent of kidney is adrenal, shows just below kidney 16. We do something in the kidney below the knees, originally kidney 6, plus 27. Okay. Another sign of adrenals could be kidney 2A. Okay. So she still has this one, and I told you that gallbladder 27, 28 can release the liver. Let's see if that will release her. her. Ooh, oh. Oh. oh, she's not so tough after all. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. How is now here? Uh, it's still tight. It might be a little better. Okay, so not clear. Yeah. Of course, so it's not worth it. Okay, so uh, we'll have to think of something else. I'll think of something <laughs> a, bit, a little bit. We'll, we'll finish the lecture. Thank you. She was just a quickie here. Yeah. Um, so, um, so that's the case. On the back, often we'll do UB52 towards the spine. If they have pain on UB23 area, quadratus lumborum pain, we release often with lung 10. Our lung 10 is not on the edge of the bone, it's more behind the large intestine four. Remember I told you that's like old man's point. Okay. Um, so that's kidney. On the back also, um, sometimes kidney will do sacroiliac ligaments because they may have valley back. Okay. The, the back that the spine is sunk between the paraspinals. Um, then we have the lungs. So lungs, for us, the bronchies reflect on the kidney channel, not on lung one, but not that concern. Yes? Kidney, in general, kidney appearances? Or? No, I don't have good kidney appearances. <laughs> no, physical damage of the kidney may show on kidney 16. Okay, so, you know, like the renal failure types which will, will, are likely to show kidney 16. Or GB25 um, area also. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, so uh, that's an adrenal type. Acne on below the mouth is considered an adrenal type. So if you like, yeah, because you asked for a period. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Um, Missing kidney? Should show kidney 16. Also. It's missing, it's Wong. <laughs> it should show in Wang Shu. <laughs> no, but kidney, ki physical kidney shows in kidney 16. That's why I believe Manifat thought that kidney, that, um, kidney, mule is, kidney 16 is the better kidney mule than um, you know, GB25. Um, so in lungs, we generally check the lung line. Now, it can also show right stomach 27, right? And so now, if they have if they have a problem with inhalation, we use you can think of it as kidney four. We think of it as kidney three. Kidney four needle towards the bone, downwards towards the heel. If it's exhalation, we use spleen four because it's chunk, it rises, it responds to exhalation. And either one, we use lung five. So if you have both inhalation and exhalation, start with the inhalation. Start with the kidney. 
you want the inhalation towards the belly, downwards towards the heel. Once the inhalation is better, you can you can start doing the split four if the exhalation is left. But if you have both, don't do the split, generally don't do the split four. Watch out with spleen four if you want to use spleen four with lung problems because it's a chest issue and the pulse is very tiny. Spleen four is not the best point for them. So you just need to accept that and figure out something else. But those are the protocols. Cardiac, we talked to yesterday about cardiac. Pathognomonic of cardiac is small intestine 11 on the left side. I know. We talk doesn't mean you remember. It's okay. That's why you repeat. <laughs> Um, small intestine 11 on the left side is the, is the pathognomonic for cardiac, but cardiac patients are likely to show left side kidney line, but that can be lung, especially if you have both sides kidney line shows, then for sure. But it, in all, even if just left side shows, it may mean that the left lung is showing more clearly. So it's not, a, the, the left kidney line is not already cardiac. S stomach 18, REN 17, Pericardium 1. Pericardium 1 I take on the ribs. Don't forget the once and away from the nipple. I mean, who, how can you possibly pump in someone once and away from the nipple? I mean, well, you could. But, you know, it's, it's really, you think about it as go about a 22 slightly forward. Okay. So, those are your cardiac, and spleen 20 is the cardiac reflex on the left. So, those are your cardiac reflexes. A few things to watch out on, on cardiac patients is ultimately you want to stimulate small intestine 11 and or the outer UV line, UV 42, 43, 44, and you look towards the scapula with direct moxa. That's the ultimate place you want to get to. Before you do that, you need to do a whole bunch of things. First of all, treat everything else. Don't forget that liver is involved often in cardiac situations. Wood is mother of fire. Okay, so treat it. Often you don't need to treat liver. It's often liver deficiency. Um, Make sure there's no, that you're treating the edema first. When I say first, in the same treatment, first move the water. Moving water, edema treatment, is spleen 3, 7, and 11. Spleen 3, 7, 11. Spleen 11 is a place where, where you pinch, it's thick. Don't take it by point location. Or when you, when you rub your hands, you'll feel thicker skin on spleen 11. Your main point for edema is spleen 7. Okay, so if you're doing sh trying to get shortcuts or whatever, or you can't do spleen 3 because the pulse is big, or you know, yeah, there's very, very various reasons why you can't do a full protocol sometimes. But you know that your main point is spleen 7 for edema. You've got to start moving that water before you push into the heart. Okay, so don't treat the heart before you move the water. You're not, you don't have to get rid of the edema because that can take months. Okay, before you treat the heart. So in that treatment, treat the edema, then start treating the heart. Um, the other type you have to do something first is the type that has a very small pulse. There's not enough substance. There's not enough blood. So needle uh, spleen six first, possibly with direct moxa. You can add spleen 10 at that point if you want to, to make sure that you have enough blood before you start pushing on the heart. Then on the front, split, uh, rent four is your big uh, deal for heart cardiac. Don't forget all the autonomic nervous system possibilities um, you know, that can be involved with cardiac conditions. Okay. Um, okay. All right. Um, and under the second toe on the left side is tachycardia point. Okay, so we show all the points under the toes are not so good for slow pulses to begin with. They're not our favorite for slow pulses. But under the second toe is for tachycardia. And we use that a lot for heart disease. Then on the back, when you flip them over, you know, so remember I do do two to release you before you do 43, 44. That's an autonomic nervous system situation. But before, so I can do that, and then what I do is I check UB60. Originally, we used to check UB60 only on the left side. If UB60 is painful, it's a fire point, we do metal water. UB66 and 67. That should release small intestine 11 and out of UB line on the left. 
If UV60 is not painful, needle UV60 upwards. It's against the channel. And, you know, I still use the same size needles, which is number one, but Kiko will, will tell you to use number three, a thicker needle. Okay, so UV60 and GB39 we use against the channel and with thicker needles. Okay. Um, then you, I do UV27. I do whatever else is needed to do, like for example, liver, spleen, whatever else there is. And then at the very end, at the end of all of this, this is when I surround small intestine 11 and needle the outer UV line, UV42, 43, 44 area towards the scapula and do direct moxa on it. That's at the very, very end. Okay? So that's the cardiac. So now we basically did all our five phases. What time is it now? <laughs> We've got a few minutes. So. <laughs> it's important. Okay, so autonomic nervous system, as you pointed out, is like a huge deal because if you relax people's nervous systems, you, you, you're allowing for a whole bunch of things to happen. So that's basically going to mean release the neck for the most part. Okay? Releasing the SCM, releasing the occiput. Now, the occiput also, the occiput the Chinese call that area, they call an yen, you know. Um, uh, peaceful sleeping. Yeah. Okay. It's messy, messy. Uh, yeah, but it's the whole, it's uh, the whole, whole oxygen for me. Because also GB20 and UB10, they're all related to, you know, to this idea of good sleeping, the, the, the capacity. And then behind here, we have a point that, you know, um, 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 uh, Lu Xi. Lu Xi. Lu Xi. Okay. The X and the L got confused in my. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I have. To, okay. I'll, I'll have to look up the the, the restless one, the the, um, the restful one. It actually the character. Can, can you write the? Uh, it's no? hard. Yeah. It's hard, that character is hard to write. But in that. <laughs> but but the, I could write she. There's a reason. The skull I can do also. Uh, big deal. Well, no, no, you no, put no. an X in. No, this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Back. Right? This is a heart. Oh. That's the head. Oh, the head. Yeah. Is well, that oh, Thank you. No, 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 no. This is another one. Okay. Okay, which one is it? This is a skull. Is she? Yeah. yeah I, I but the blue, the blue. Blue, I can't write. Okay. That's but, too but, the, <laughs> but the blue has core in it. Something, something that's a core. Okay. Um, well, no, look, okay. Well, if we find it, well, we'll write it down. So it has a whole bunch of like rest, resting skull, let the skull rest, for example. Okay? Resting pillar is UB10. Okay, or, or jade pillar, sorry. Okay, so it all has to do with like letting this letting everything sink and go. Okay, so the state of the nervous system that's open and spacious is basically this area. Okay? It also relates to endocrine. Remember the discussion about the do yesterday? That the do, you know, we can interpret do to mean both nervous system and endocrine system because it's the governor, it's not the emperor. You look like you have no clue what I'm talking about. No, no, I'm, uh, yeah. Okay, you're <laughs> processing. She's processing. <laughs> All right, so um, nervous system is going to be releasing the SCM, which is either triple one or five, opposite side of the SCM, or eight. Five is for rapid pulse. If they have a clearly tight pulse, meaning thin, wiry, and disappears or changes on pressure, it's going to be under the third toe. Do, if you're not clear about the pulse, and the pulse is slow, do not use under the third toe. This is also our main point for blood pressure issues. Um, if they have rapid pulse, sorry? The third toe. The third toe, under the third toe, yeah, third toe. Second toe on the left side is cardiac, tachycardia. Under the third toe is autonomic nervous system, primarily blood pressure disorders. Oh, I'm Either, low or low. Either one, the same, that we don't do that. <coughs> Try it here. Do you need both um, under the second toe? Yeah. Both yeah. sides also? Or just no, like, just left. Like, oh, yeah, just left. Like. Um, now, under the third toe, if you're trying to fix the occiput, be aware that under the third toe, above T7 starts to cross. Okay. okay. We're going to get the camera. Okay. 
Um, then we have um, okay, the third, if they have rapid pulse. So Nagano said, rapid, Nagano has this, this sort of dogma, okay? Rapid pulse with autonomic nervous system, he called sympathetic dominant. Slow pulse, parasympathetic dominant. Well, I hate to tell you, I don't think so. But that's just me. Okay. But if you yeah, and you will see that clear distinction in Kiko's book, and you know, and she will often talk about it because it's, it's so drilled. This rapid pulse, slow pulse business. I don't think you can say that someone with a slow pulse is necessarily parasympathetic dominant. It's just not so not so clear to me. Um, anyway, with. Um, with rapid pulse, the other thing is look at liver 12 to analyze the characters. Uh, well, the this one is definitely head. Uh, this yeah. one, this one is the brain, right? That's the brain. Yeah. Okay. So and this is. That's also brain or head or I think I'm not sure. I need to, okay, I'll, I'll look it up. I'll I'll, I'll figure that out before. Yeah. Against 42, 43, also 44, 45. Also 44, 45. 42, 43, 44, 45. The whole inner border of the scan. Okay? And then you'll end up probably doing, we call UB 1617, we call autonomic nervous system shoe. Okay? And we like to do mocks of it. Okay? So that's your autonomic nervous system types. Your diabetic types. They are basically, they don't, so autonomic nervous system does not have a reflex in the body. They may show REM17, they may show only oxy, but they may show SCM, but the main diagnostic tool on them is the, is the pulse. Diabetics also don't have a reflex in the body, okay? Except you could say a lot of them will show T11, T12, they'll show extra tissue on the vertebrae. The treatment for diabetics, no matter what a diabetic comes for, they can come for back pain, shoulder pain, knee pain, whatever, chances are that if you do diabetic treatment, their symptom will also get better, no matter what it is. Uh, and that's true for autoimmune disorders also. So diabetes is spleen 3 plus adrenal plus immune point plus OD sphincter point. Take the navel and the ribs. 45 degrees, halfway between. That's the OD point, only on the right side. It only exists on the right side, okay? So, spleen three, adrenal, immune, and OD. Now, your adrenal has a number of options, so you'll have to figure out which adrenal is best for this person. So just, you know, you have choices. On the back, that person is a T11, T12 for sure. Okay? Everything else you add to the treatment is to go ahead. But this is your, you all like to the diabetic person or someone whose family has lots of diabetes, chances are this is going to be very important for them. Thyroid problems. Thyroid to us is in the kidney domain. The kidney channel circulates the throat. Okay? And the thyroid is a metabolic gland, it's an endocrine gland, therefore it does not for us belong in the stomach channel, in the stomach domain, or the heart domain, like people say heart fire, uh, spleen gene deficiency, stomach fire, you know, we're trying to, but for us it's very clearly kidney. The official dogma, which does not always work in my opinion, hypothyroid is kidney three, needled towards the Achilles. So this is kidney three. Not kidney, you know, whereas for the lungs it's more like kidney four. For hyperthyroids should be supposedly kidney seven and ten because they should supposedly show kidney two pain. And for goiter or enlarged thyroid should be kidney nine. My suggestion to you is ignore that altogether, what I just told you. That, no, but that's you should know what the original protocols are and check which one does the best job. Kidney three does not do a good job as often as you would like it to. With all the hyperthyroids that are out there, you would think that kidney three would do a fabulous job for all these people. It doesn't. So, just to, to have an awareness of that. Your kidney seven is gonna be much more common. Kidney seven and nine are gonna be much more common in, in thyroid issues than kidney three. On the back, 
Now you can add other things, for example, triple warmer you can add, you can add stomach gene thyroid, you can add, but that's the essence of thyroid is going to be in the kidney. On the back for hypothyroid, it's very important because you describe hypothyroid as lack of yang. So you're stimulating the two channel. D2, possibly L2. Okay, so when I say L2 means do or Wato. And T11, T12, I will tell you T7 and T5. Kika will tell you nowadays T9 and T4. Okay, so we have a difference in, uh, in which ones we use. Okay, so that's your thyroid treatments. And the last one is the autoimmune, auto, um, uh, autoimmune um, types, which are extremely important. There's lots of people have them. And if somebody has autoimmune, you cannot ignore like the one who's, you know, um, this is the one who's unstable. If you have autoimmune, you've got to treat autoimmune. You can't get away. You can do more things. You can say the root of it is also somewhere else, but you will end up treating autoimmune. Autoimmune is systemic fire in the body. It's systemic inflammation. Therefore, we do systemic metal water. What does that mean? So we'll do, if rapid or regular pulse, we'll do REN4. You can do Mushu instead. It can be a substitute. When would you want the substitute? Well, if they have Crohn's or they have ulcerative colitis, you can't touch REN4 because that's where they have an inflammation possible. Don't do it, don't leave it. Then you add kidney points for the water and you add lung points for the metal. That's your systemic metal water. Then on the back, your equivalent of that is UB27, the mu point, the shoe point of the small intestine instead of REN4. Or you can use UB26, it's called Guan Yuan Shu, Ren 4 Shu. Okay. Or you can use L5 itself. Or you can use O3 for all of you. Okay. I, I will tell you that one of the signs of autoimmune disorder, people very commonly, if they've had it for a while, they'll have like, like little pink, moving ping pong balls on the sacral iliac ligaments. Uh, I've heard the expression uh, a rolling mouse. Um, you know, but I, don't, I don't know what, you know, because I've, I've just seen it, I don't know what, what the person meant. Um, so, uh, and then the kidney equivalent would be UB23 or 52, and the lung equivalent will be UB13 or 42. It's pretty obvious, I mean, you know, it's, it's fairly obvious. Oh, in autonomic nervous system, please add small intestine 910, not autoimmune, autonomic nervous. You say each small test of anything you would just get one point or three or You can do more if you want. It's one point, it's in between. It's neither nine nor ten, it's in between. So they're okay. Yeah. But you can do more if you want. Yes. So you've got a bunch of time you've got a fair amount of times that will cover a fair amount of patients. I'm not saying they'll cover everyone. Yes. But you for the order you need for kidney, you had to for for lung you you see you just the lung shoe, lung shoe or outside lung shoe, but, but kidney shoe or outside right, but you, you, you don't differentiate, you just add both kidney and lung. You have to add both kidney and lung because yeah. it's metal water. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, just the elements. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, originally that treatment said slow pulse treat the back, rapid pulse treat the, part, the front. What I'm saying, that's me. Yeah. Rap slow pulse, still treat the front, just don't do REN4. So yes. still treat kidney and lung on the front. We don't just split them over without a front treatment. It's very rare that I even stop with a back treatment. Sometimes I'll stop with a back treatment. It's very rare for me. And then, um, so, and rapid pulse, you know, supposedly you don't need to do the back treatment. I still do it. So, you know, it's fine. Yes? I have a woman who refuses to allow me to touch her abdomen. So for her, could I start on the back, and then once she gets comfortable, do the pulse? Will she let you needle the, the, the abdomen after you've done the back? Do you think that would you? Know. Yeah, it's worth trying. I mean, every so often you have a patient that, for some reason, what I would do is just you know if she doesn't want to do the abdomen. Well, what you need to do is you need to what my Indonesian student does: have a big picture of the abdomen outside your clinic. <laughs> 
beautiful woman with a bikini <laughs> to attract all the patients in. And you say, do you see this sign? Why do you think you're here? No. <laughs> um, what I would do is just diagnose people for if somebody doesn't let you. I mean, I, I was just teaching in Indonesia like a, a few months ago with women with this. <laughs> You know, it's like, well, and one of them wanted to treat, she wanted me to pop it over this close, and then some, you know, treat it, do what you can. You can't be this, you can't. Diagnose what, from what you can. The abdomen, like pregnant women, there's no abdomen. You can't press. So, you, you do what you can with what you, you know, it, it's okay. You know, so, but every so often if a patient doesn't show anything in the abdomen, and there may be a reason to go for the back. So. One of the main reasons to go for the back, two, two good reasons to go for the back. Number one, slow pulse person. You found nothing on the front. You're hoping that if you clear something on the back, maybe when you turn them over, you'll find something. But quite honestly, that doesn't happen so often. But there are some types that won't show anything on the front. You turn them over, uh, and this is a popular one in my, in my clinic, relatively popular, yeah? not every patient, but if I do Ihikon, if there's a reason to do Ihikon, I'll turn them on the back, do the Ihikon. So for example, they had a head injury or they had a problem that started with a fever. Those are two indications of Ihikon, UB40, 58, 60. Okay. Then I'll do the Ihikon, I'll do the back treatment, then I'll turn them to the front, and sometimes those people will start showing stuff in the abdomen that they didn't show before. It can happen. But in general, no, I don't do the, front, the back first. I generally try to do the front first. Kiko now seems to be willing to do the back first. Yeah. Can you break Ikikan? I'm not following what, what you're saying. Sorry? I don't know what Ikikan. Ikikan. Can, can you write what you're. Thank you. Ikikan. Ikikan. Maybe 60, 58, and 40. It comes from the names. Kunlun, that's obvious. 58 is called Feiyang. In Japanese, it would call, it's called Hiyang. Uh, UB40 is called Weizhang. In Japanese, it's called Ijang. Okay, so it's the name of the four points. Take your UB40. Worst person to draw things. This is your thigh, this is your knee, this is your calf, these are your ankles. <laughs> <laughs> this is your buttocks. <laughs> Alright, so, um, and this is the big toe, let's say. Okay, so you take it, this is the big toe, okay, so this, this is the other thigh here. Okay, so you take the lateral side. Take this triangle. Kiko says just go lateral to UB40 now, but originally we said take this triangle, then go slightly above and needle into this triangle in this direction. And I still do that for UB40. But if you just go to what you think is UB39, that's officially UB40 also. But I still go slightly above and needle into the, whatever it's called, the fossa there. Okay? Yes? subject. Aren't the point points that you can't for No, uh, no, no. They're for head injury, you, if they have head injury on the side of the Shaoyang, you use what we call, uh, well, you can use Sanja 8 plus something on the kidney. Originally it was kidney 10, but quite honestly, kidney 7 or 9 work better. And liver 8, and quite honestly, liver 9 might work better. Okay? This is called basilary artery insufficient treatment. Basilary artery insufficiency treatment. Which means exactly. <coughs> Your chiropractic. You should know. I know, but I want, I want it more definitely. It no. means they have the vertebrae going up to the brain is being congested through um, cervical pressure. 
Okay, so it's not one particular vertebrae necessarily; it's usually the whole cervicals. Yeah. These are people that, for example, if, if they, they they can't look like the, you know, it hurts them to do this. You know, um, so we do this, and on the back we do do econ. But it's not a this is not a head injury treatment. Econ happens to be the complement of vascular artery insufficiency on on the back. So this is for so is it, so are these points also for head injury? Yes, if the head injury is on the side. I mean, it's, it gets hard. A head injury gets hard.